welcome everyone to my lecture on obturation i am going to take this lecture in two parts in part 1 i am going to discuss about the materials used for obturation and in part 2 i am going to discuss in detail the various techniques used for obturation of the root canal now coming to learning outcomes of this part 1 lecture describe the purpose of obturation recognize the clinical criteria that determine the timing of obturation list the criteria for ideal obturating material that is core material as well as sealer list common core materials and sealers with their composition advantages and disadvantages successful root canal treatment depends on uh, good diagnosis treatment planning need to have adequate knowledge of a tooth anatomy follow the concepts of debridement sterilization and obturation each and every step is important if one step goes wrong the entire root canal may fail several obturation techniques have been proposed for root canal treatment the choice uh, depends upon the canal anatomy and unique objectives of treatment for each case two basic obturation procedures are lateral condensation and warm vertical condensation with the advent of new devices and techniques such as those that utilize heat and vibration for warm lateral or warm vertical condensation are revolutionizing the practice of endodontics and making obturation procedures more predictable root canal treatment can be predictably successful with careful cleaning and shaping of the canal system and also three dimensional obturation and a very well adapted coronal restoration final obturation of root canal that is not completely cleaned and shaped is contraindicated during cleaning and shaping process organic and inorganic debris which accumulate on the canal walls may produce an amorphous irregular smear layer this can interfere with the adhesion and penetration into the dentinal tubules of intracanal medicaments and or root canal sealer during obturation take make sure prior to obturation the entire smear layer is completely removed and the dentin interface is thoroughly dried so when do we obturate the canal there are certain criteria you have to bear in mind uh, before obturation that means after cleaning and shaping has been done and uh, we go to the next step that is obturation we have to uh, consider these criteria for deciding to obturate before deciding to obturate first and foremost there should be no discharge or exudate from the canal there should not be any fall order emanating from the canals there should not be any draining draining sinus if there was a draining sinus before it has to be healed there should not be any signs of active periapical pathology there should be reduction in number of microorganisms by canal preparation and medication negative culture sensitivity test if you are doing one and vital pulp can be obturated in the same canal uh, in the same visit that means if uh, you are doing a root canal treatment for a vital pulp you can consider for single visit endodontics now moving on to the requirements of an ideal root canal filling material so here when we are talking about filling material we are talking about core material as well as the sealer so any root canal filling material which is used should be easily manipulated with ample working time the material should be radio opaque so that it can be clearly seen or visualized in a radiograph we expect that these materials should be dimensionally stable and they have the ability to seal the canal laterally and apically conforming to its complex internal anatomy the material should be impervious to moisture and should be non porous 
it should inhibit bacterial growth and should not be irritating to the periapical tissues the material should be unaffected by tissue fluids and should not corrode or get easily oxidized the material should not discolor the tooth structure and should be easily removable from the canal if necessary if necessary means if there is re rct or re root canal treatment is required this material should be uh, easily retrievable from the canal the material can be or should be made sterile very easily before treatment so these are the requirements of the ideal root canal filling material now moving on to various root canal obturating materials which are available uh, in 1941 jasper introduced silver cones these silver cones were very rigid and they were very easy to place inside the root canal however there was inability to fill the irregular shaped root canal system which may which had led to leakage in the after the root canal treatment silo points were found to corrode over a period of time and these corrosion products were found to be highly cytotoxic and thus silver cones are no longer used for root canal obturation now moving on to the material which is most widely and popular uh, to use as core material in root canal treatment is gutta percha okay this material was introduced into dentistry by bowman in 1867 the composition of the material gutta percha is 20% acts as a matrix zinc oxide which is a major constituent is about 66% and acts as a filler there is also use of heavy metal sulf sulfates because we want to appreciate the presence of root canal filling material in during in after root canal treatment and it is about 11% and there is use of waxes and resins about 3% acting as plasticizer for many years the gutta percha has proven to be the material of choice for successful obturation when used in combination with a root canal sealer which is necessary to seal the space between the dentinal wall and the obturating core interface the sealers also fill the voids and the root canal irregularities lateral and axillary canals and the spaces between the gutta percha points used in lateral condensation it can be made to flow using heat or using solvents such as chloroform or eucalyptus as well as by ultrasonics and vibration the gutta percha exists in two crystalline forms alpha which is flowable and tacky whereas beta which is solid and non flowable so let's look at the difference between a beta phase and alpha phase an unheated beta phase which is solid and non flowable and it is also compactable the compaction results in equal transmission of forces to the gutta percha and the canal wall the excessive condensation may result in root fracture as i said the beta phase which is unheated it is solid and non flowable so when you apply heat this gutta percha transforms into alpha phase which becomes pliable and tacky this phase flows when pressure is applied and permits adaptation to the canal wall irregularities it again recrystallizes the beta phase with routine cooling this leads to shrinking on setting which can be a disadvantage the alpha phase melts when heated above 65 degrees centigrade less shrinkage when alpha phase is heated and cooled and becomes more dimensionally stable when cooled very slowly the alpha phase recrystallizes so this is the difference between unheated beta phase and the alpha phase which has heat transformed from beta phase gutta percha are also available in conventional and standardized sizes standardized cones are designed to match the taper of stainless steel and nickel titanium instruments gutta percha po points can be easily sterilized before use by placing the cones in 5.25% sodium hypochlorite for 1 minute now coming to the second component of uh, root canal obturation those are root canal sealers uh, the first component we already discussed is a core material which is a gutta percha so a root canal sealer is used in combination with gutta percha the primary role of sealer is to loot the core materials to the dentin of the 
canal wall and seal and obliterate the irregularities between the canal wall and the coronal core filling material. It acts as a lubricant during obturation. The sealer should be bactericidal. It should help obturate lateral as well as axillary canals, resolve to defects and other spaces which the core material may not be able to penetrate. The requirements of sealers, it should be tacky when mixed and should create a hermetic seal. Material should be radio opaque so that it can be seen clearly in a radiograph. Material should be bacteriostatic. It should set slowly and provide adequate working time. It should be insoluble in tissue fluids, non-irritating and soluble in common solvents when it has to be retrieved during root canal treatment. What we don't want from these root canal sealers is that we don't want it to shrink upon setting, stain the tooth and provide immune response in periradicular tissues if it has extruded and it should not be mutagenic or carcinogenic. Grossman has classified the currently employed root canal sealers into four categories. First is zinc oxide eugenol based sealers. Under this we have Grossman's formula sealer, rod sealer and tubeless seal. The second category is the calcium hydroxide based sealers. Examples are Sealapex and Apexit. The third is glass ionomer based sealers which are Zicol and Kitak Endo. And fourth is the resin based sealers, nowadays most commonly used are AH plus, AH26, Epiphany and Diacan. These are the examples, commercial examples. Okay. So coming to eugenol based sealers or eugenol containing sealers. Now coming to the zinc oxide eugenol based sealer, in this slide I have uh, listed out the advantages and disadvantages. It was most commonly used sealer uh, long back. Uh, the clear uh, the advantages are uh, it is very easy to manipulate it can adhere to the dentinal wall and has a very slight dimensional changes it is radio opaque so it can be easily appreciated during uh, in an intraoral periapical radiograph it has got good germicidal property it has got very minimal staining of the dentin and provides for ample working time because it is very slow in setting. The disadvantages of zinc oxide eugenol based sealers, it uh, allows some fluid absorption and it can be irritant to the periapical area if extruded beyond the apex and it is not uh, easily absorbed uh, from the apical tissues. Coming to resin based sealers, the, the examples are AH26, AH plus and Epiphany. Whereas uh, these examples for calcium, hydrox I calcium hydroxide based sealers are Epexid and Sealapex. The calcium hydroxide has been used in endodontics uh, for various, pur various purposes like root canal filling materials, intracanal medicament and also as a sealer in combination with solid core material. Pure calcium hydroxide paste can be used alone or it can be mixed with normal saline solution. The alkalinity of calcium hydroxide stimulates the induction of mineralized tissue. Calcium hydroxide sealers, these are the properties. It can induce mineralization. It can induce apical closure via cementogenesis. Inhibits root resorption, inhibits osteoclast activity. It can seal or prevent micro leakage and it is considered very less toxic. Moving on to Resilon or Epiphany system, this system uh, offers solutions to the problems associated with gutta perka, which is uh, shrinkage of gutta perka after application of heat. And there can be a gap between the sealer and gutta perka because there is a shrinkage after cooling. Resilon system comprises of three components. The first is a self edge primer, which needs to be applied to the dentinal wall. Followed by uh, you have a resilon sealer which is dual curable that means it is both self cure and light cure a resin based composite sealer and then the third one is the resilon core material. These three components together form a uh, bond which is called as a monoblock concept that means a, the resilon core material, the sealer and the primer they adhere properly to the dental wall and then they form together a um, uh, a monoblock. So this concept of uh, Resilon system is called as monoblock concept. The properties of Epiphany are it is very biocompatible, non-cytotoxic, non-mutagenic and it has got excellent sealing ability. 
So this is all about the root canal filling materials, core materials as well as sealers. And in part two, I am going to discuss the various techniques which can be used for root canal obturation. So thank you everyone for listening to the my lecture.